Today's Tech Tuesday is brought to you by RPM Noise. So have you ever experienced RPM on a handheld going up to 59,000 and then shutting off? Have you ever seen code 36 pop up? Have you ever gone under the fault code selection and seen it where it says RPM Noise? Well, those are the things that we're gonna to try to cover today. A perfect example of an ignition system that will not work with EFI is point style ignition. The reason is, is it requires a ballast resistor to cut voltage down to nine volts, which will not work with EFI. Beware of other ballast resisted ignitions as well, such as a factory Mopar ignition. A popular type of ignition system that does work with EFI is a CDI ignition. They provide a digital tack signal output, but be careful with how you route your wires. Wire routing is important to separate high voltage wires from signal wires. An example of a high voltage wire would be the coil wires, which have 500 volts going through them. A signal wire would be your tack signal wire. You want to avoid running these wires parallel, but you can run them perpendicular and have them cross. Even a simple ignition system, such as an HEI ignition, has some special requirements. HEI distributors require a 12 gauge or larger wire to feed power to them. Too small of a wire will strain the ignition system and will cause erratic signals to the tack. Now let's talk about spark plugs and spark plug wires. It may sound tempting to use products marked racing style plugs and wires. However, this is not a good idea. These products do not suppress electrical noise even though high voltage is running through them. Look at the spark plugs with a resistor in them you can look up the part number of your current spark plugs online and find a spec sheet to find out if there's a resistor. As for the spark plug wires, try to avoid solid core wires. Instead, replace with a spiral core wire. These wires have an EMI suppression element inside of them that reduce electrical noise. Today I'm going to talk about EMI, which is electromagnetic interference, and uh, also I'm going to cover the basics of uh, analog and, and digital attack signals. Um, EMI is uh, basically we describe it as noise, um, but it's actually uh, an effect that comes out of having current flow through wires. It'll actually send out a magnetic uh, wave, and that wave will hit other wires, and that'll induce a current in those wires. So the biggest source of EMI would be your ignition system because we're dealing with hundreds of volts, even thousands, um, and, uh, and parts of an amp or even, you know, several, several tenths of an amp or an amp or two, depending on which part of the firing cycle it is. So uh, um, when each cylinder fires, it's firing at thousands of volts. There's a, a bit of current going through a, a plug wire. That sends out a wave, and it, if it's close enough to another wire and it's in the right orientation, it can pick it up as like a, an antenna. So every wire on here can act like an antenna. If that antenna isn't properly situated to avoid or uh, negate that EMI, that voltage could reach the computer. Um, and the computer, sometimes, if it reaches the right circuit, it can trigger uh, extra RPM signals. And uh, oftentimes, the computer can reject that noise. But when it can't, um, you might get an extra injection. You might get a, a, a misfire. But if it does reject the, the signal, it will show an RPM noise fault, fault 36 in the dashboard. And if there's enough of them in a short period of time, it will actually save a long-term fault. And that you can read in the fault codes on the handheld. The biggest source being the ignition system, typically with a good ignition system, there isn't, a, there isn't very much EMI coming out that's gonna be large enough to interfere with our system. But what happens is when a spark plug wire is loose or has burnt or is or if our system is run too close to the CDI uh, power wire, um, the, the amount, amount of interference is too much to handle and it will sometimes show either a RPM fault or actually start running bad where you'll see the RPM jump to double or more 
or cut in half sometimes if it's rejecting the right one or the wrong one. Um, so EMI typically is going to be ignition system, burnt plug wires, loose plug uh, connections, maybe wires are zip tied to the spark plug wires, which is a very big no-no, or zip tied to the CDI power wires, uh, CDI coil wires. Another way to avoid interference would be to, wait, to uh, twist wires like so. So twisted wire pairs, if, it's in a, if, it, if they're in the same circuit, will cancel noise by uh, having different directions of loops of the EMI wave being self-canceling. Um, another way to uh, reduce EMI uh, effects is to uh, shield a wire. A shield should be grounded on one side and one side only for it to uh, to capture and ground out the EMI waves. I hope you enjoyed our tech video today. Please tune back in next week. Hey guys, thank you for watching this episode of Tech Tuesday. Please like, share, and comment your questions below and we'll get those tech questions answered for you.